to the editors, November 25th, 1950. Enclosed, please file my case study for peer review and publication. Sincerely, Irene Ibis, MD. The New England tapeworm, Tinea nova britannia, is a cestoid parasite presently treated with antihematics, which have contraindications and limited effectiveness. The patient presented, see figure one, with complaints of fatigue, weight loss, and diarrhea. Routine examination indicated an infestation of Tinea nova Britannia. In a less enlightened age, this was dire, but modern science brings a brighter prognosis. Foreign objects would be introduced as antigens, stimulating an antibody response, ejecting the parasite. The therapy would be administered over the course of a week, affecting a complete return to health. At night, our eyes turn toward the moon, yearning for the most virtuous rabbit chosen from those who recently left us.
Welcome to our perfect world, a jewel on the wine-dark sea, now graced by strange-looking guests. Come lately here to study us. Blow wind and crack your cheeks. By the pricking of my nose, something foolish this way goes. Good morrow, fair herald. What news? Of men, or so they call themselves. Men? What a dull name. Love, like a shadow, flies when substance love pursues. Pursuing that that flies, and flying what pursues. Love, like a shadow, flies when substance love pursues. We have seen one of their kind before. Gentle skunkfist, master of song. Yipes! Oh, it's you. Praise Mother Moon. Uh, dear, my heart. And mine. But I fear their kind may not be likewise kind. Kind Stumpfist taught me these trills while he sought refuge here from war. A treasure here may prove you wrong, so lend a nose and fathom hence. What testament of good or ill has fortune spilled from careless purse? What a piece of work is a man! How noble in reason! How infinite in faculties! In form and moving, how express and admirable! In action, how like an angel! In apprehension, how like a god! I am relieved. What wonders await! Baby? Why would they? Mother Moon, preserve us. But preserve us not like that. What monsters among us. <gasps> cut down and then cut up. Thou for some said. Thou unnecessary letters. My lord, you will give me leave. I will tread this unvoted villain into mortar. Look! Their winged ship drops shining gift into our paws. Lord, what fools these...
have no, some we have some medical professionals here who could help well, with the know, details. Well, I mean, on the screen, how did you do it? <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, well, it, it's the the magic of cinema. Uh huh. Did um, you speak of light or what? Um, well, it was uh, everything with um, film uh, or digital film, is in this case. Um, the documentary maker, uh, Don Pennybaker, uh, said that um, film is truth 24 times a second. And that has to do with the frame rate, and it isn't film specifically because it's digital, but still it's built on the foundation of film. And the uh, frame rate is now 29.9 um, times a second. But this, um, the principle holds. And uh, we're counting on the uh, persistence of vision. And we can uh, help that along by pushing the uh, movements of the creatures in real time. And that can be transliterated into the perceived time uh, of all the frames stringing together. Um, these were made with uh, molds of silicone. And uh, there was a. Um, uh, an original model that was made out of a, a non-reactive clay, and then there was a uh, there was a uh, a mold that uh, was made from that, and then the silicone resin was poured into it. And, and but there's a, a lot more to it than that. Anyway, the idea is to have all of the uh, parts of it uh, merge together and create the illusion of. Uh, life, of reality, of movement, uh, of uh, light and dark and narrative. Um, can, can you show some of the uh, moving parts in the eyes and other things? That I, I don't want to take the eyes out. They're, they're, <laughs> oh, they're, the they're hard to, eyes. they're very hard to, oh, okay. Here's a box of eyes. Um, <laughs> Uh, the eyes were done by uh, a technique called replacement, which is having them made in, in a static position and then taking them out and putting them back, uh, putting back uh, another piece um, that's built slightly differently. And the uh, difference between those two shows up as the movement. Mm -hmm. uh, it depicts the uh, uh, transition. Um, some of these have other techniques. There are uh, gears here. And what did the gears do? Uh, this opens and closes the jaw. Hmm. You know, this uh, worm gear um, on this, wow. uh, and it pulls the, some fish cable, some uh, fishing line through this sheath. And uh, the mouth moves in response to that. Huh. And we control that with this worm gear. Can you talk about how you block the fur? Oh, oh, right. That's the dangerous part. The fur, all right, after the silicone is made, uh, it's very difficult to glue things to silicone. Uh, and uh, so uh, I used a, an electrostatic generator, which is a, a Van de Graaff generator, which was I think about um, 200 kilovolts. And there was a kitchen strainer that I poured some lint into. And you can get really nicely colored lint. <laughs> and well, you cut it off from fake fur? Yeah, well, some of it was. No, I didn't use fake fur. Uh, I did use some, but this was uh, glued down. This is uh, from a, a fabric store. Oh, okay. 
and there are some metal springs and uh, cable sheaths uh, that I used so that the um, you know, uh, the structure was can, yeah, uh, flexible and uh, stays in place. And so that one is the one that you did with the rabbit gun? Uh, they, uh, a lot of them are. Uh, this and this and this. We used uh, the static generator on. Um, yeah, don't ask me to plug this in because uh, I'm a little skeptical that it could survive it. <laughs> um, but in this case, there was also uh, an electric motor uh, that communicated uh, movement through these three cable sheaths. And there was a transmission inside the thorax that would uh, move the ears up and down. And we underscored that movement by using a, uh, a very long exposure so that it would blur the movement of the ears. By you know, slowing down the uh, camera exposure. And the um, rest of it is of the training of these talented actors and vocalists who taught their skills, their, their musical skills, their singing, their uh, dramatic um, you know, talents to these small synthetic rubber creatures. Do you want to introduce the people in the audience? Oh, oh yes, yes. Robin? Yeah, several of the voices on this was uh, Goldie Vox, who's right here with us, who, who just did a, a wonderful job on this in um, breathing life into all of them. Give me that. your direction. Oh. Thanks. And, um, what? First help t help you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, the factotum who uh, came to the rescue with uh, innovation and coaxing movements and uh, the like out of the creatures was my friend Chris Burke, who uh, has been involved in these projects uh, over the years. Okay. And. Um, after uh, a few years, it all came to life. How many years were you working on it? Uh, I don't know. Three, I think. No, more like seven. I think it was three. I just looked at my emails, and I saw some emails from 2016. Oh. So for sure, mm -hmm. as far back as that. Tell us a little bit about the source. Um, well, um, Picasso said that um, good artists uh, borrow and great artists steal. I thought that was Oscar Wilde. <laughs> you sure? No. Well, it's more like Picasso to recommend uh, uh, his stealing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, there was a source material for this, which was a uh, an obscure um, book written by a German uh, anatomy professor. And uh, it, it didn't get a lot of notice. And it was a parody on uh, scientific treatises. And it was, uh, it was a review of the uh, American edition, the uh, first English translation, in Scientific American when I was, in, in, I think, eighth grade, and it just uh, caught my notice and uh, stuck with it. And I uh, made the uh, uh, everything here based on the descriptions in the book. And I, uh, I kind of hope that the current copyright holder doesn't uh, 
see a, a quick way to suing me for infringement. But fortunately, there's a fair use right, I think, I hope. Hmm. Um, you want to tell people what the book is? Or? No, they're going to go running. <laughs> they're going to go sending off letters to Elsevier's agent in this country, and they'll probably get a, a, a healthy uh, bounty on my head when it comes to it. Thanks. Can I use the microphone? That's E L S. I'm curious about the one that had all the arms and it played played with the music. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's this and the. And um, there's that one too. Yeah. Yeah. This was uh, supposed to be a, a pipe organ. Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. so mm -hmm. And uh, keeping the puppets with a good balance between their flexibility and their um, st stiffness to uh, hold the poses. Mm -hmm. See, they wiggle their tails and, uh, oh and their noses. And uh, there is a lot of fishing line running through these cable guides. All you have to do is take 7,000 really good pictures in, in a row, and you've got it. Huh. Oh, and uh, having a good dialogue writer helped. Oh, yes. <laughs> Where do you go now? We don't have Radio Shack anymore. Where do you go? Um, yeah, well, there is no more Radio Shack. Um, no. I, um, you do it electronics and eat them. Oh, OK. Um, well, there are uh, places that sell silicone. Uh, there are um, places that sell the metal that's used. Uh, in the skeletons, there's a uh, metal sheathing that isn't a, a spring, but it, it maintains its shape. It's stiff. And then uh, you can run the cables through it, and you can use this to uh, hold their limbs. And uh, I, oh yeah, it's a place in Connecticut that, that makes this. And you can push the fishing line through it and then use that to uh, make them move. You make them move easy for you. Oh, well, I see. I, no, I, I don't know that I feel like plugging this in because it might uh, pull the puppet <laughs> apart. Yeah, no. yeah, but this, you wouldn't know it, but uh, you know, Jill was able to get into this costume. <laughs> and, and, uh, I was substantially smaller if you didn't. Yeah. Uh. Oh. <laughs> and and uh, terrific you, job she did. did I don't know if you asked this, if anyone asked this already. How do you make the puppets? Did someone ask that yet? Uh, I've well, been it's so a, curious to how well, pretty standard. You make them all. Um, casting method. Um, make a, an original. Uh, do sketches, of course, and uh, use cheap clay to do it at first to see how the things look in three dimensions. Um, you have to use uh, clay that doesn't have any tin in it or sulfur uh, because clay has a lot of those elements. Uh, because what that will do is uh, it will inhibit the cure in the silicone. And uh, I use a, um, a material called um, uh, hydrocal, 
which is a, a very tough plaster to make the receiving mold. And then I uh, put the halves or the, as many parts as I make together and pour in the mold material, which is a, uh, a platinum-based silicone. And uh, somewhere I should have it. Uh, the color, a lot of the color is um, dry pigments. Uh, because there's a, a really good range for it. And oh, then uh, use a, a silicone adhesive to glue some of the fur on. This is one way of doing it. You can see here I marked the uh, direction of the grain in this. And um, held down the uh, material with the silicone glue and um, had to pin everything in shape so that there wouldn't be any lumps. Do you go looking for the, uh, do you have a vision of, of what you want these animals to look like and then go looking for the stuff that'll make it work? Or do you collect stuff as you go and does that well, suggest mm -hmm. things to you? Well, both, really. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the, this creature's ears were modeled after my dog's ears, <laughs> who unfortunately is no longer with us. He should be here. How long does it usually take to make one of your creations? Uh, well, they have all different levels of complexity. Um, and it's a, a long process. And I usually do things by uh, stages rather than doing one puppet and letting it go. Um, so. Uh, as long as it takes to sketch out the idea. Uh, that's the first thing. Before you do anything, you should um, do sketches uh, from different angles. You can use uh, inexpensive clay just to see how it looks in three dimensions. Okay. And the uh, skeleton in it is, like I said, brass tubing, which is cut and soldered. And it's pinched into hinges and you know, it's uh, the metal work isn't really that um, complex it's uh, in fact I, I think it's uh, sometimes a, a little bit sloppy you know, blobs of solder and the like um, See no. Um, so for this one to work, we we had this, which connects to these cables and cable guides, which go into the transmission in here, and this is the eccentric to have the you know, motion reciprocating. But there was a small transformer, in three volts. And when I was uh, doing the shooting, I'd be looking through the camera and watching the movement and then pushing this button and it would move the cables. And uh, an interesting thing is a, a lot of the tempo in, in uh, doing the animation, which, uh, as I said, showed up at uh, 29 frames per second, uh, translated from actual regular um, middle of everything uh, movement. 
seem to fit perfectly with the tempo of some of the late um, symphonies of Dmitry Shostakovich. So I would be uh, doing the animation and in time to some of the symphonies. And it made it a lot easier because it's about rhythm. It's about the uh, visual rhythm that we're creating when the creatures are waving their arms around or uh, leaping about or um, talking to one another or gesticulating. It, it seems to translate. This isn't a question, but I just wanted to say I work in Reynolds advanced materials, and I really like working with silicone, and I really appreciated that you called us to invite us. And I'm so happy to see the final result. I've seen the little bits and bobs here and there, and it's just really cool to see the, the magic come together. Oh, so, I'm so glad you came. Yeah, thank you yeah. for inviting. That's really great. Yeah, a, a, a excellent source for materials to make all these. An no. <laughs> That's a good version of the cakes of village, really. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, all right, well, that's great, because Reynolds um, has been with me for uh, the whole process, and I appreciate it. So that's a, another important thing, is uh, get somebody who knows the materials and, and the processes and is uh, willing to help you along. Huh. Um, yeah, he makes it sound really easy what he's doing. Very complicated and very, very impressive creatures yeah. that you've created. Yeah. And to think about all the pieces that have to come together. Mm -hmm. The electronics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another thing you can do if you're just trying to put something together in a few steps is in Genesis, there's some instructions. <laughs> Modesty aside. <laughs> Do you want to say anything about the photography itself? The photography? Oh, it, it's blurry, it, it's scratchy, it, it's uh, the lights are falling, the gels are coming off, the, uh, it, it's, the photography is terrible. I mean, I've seen better images through the bottom of a soda pop bottle. <laughs> 